Luke 15, verse 17. When he came to his senses, he said, this is the prodigal son who took and ran, all right, and realized, man, that all that world didn't have nothing for him, and he was a mess. And it says he came to his senses. What we know is that at that moment, John 6, 44, no one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. That is what happened here. He came to his senses. The Holy Spirit landed on him in the mess and drew him to the Father. Every one of us, same thing. How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out, go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make one like one, sorry, make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran for him. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. Woo! Every one of us has felt that at salvation. Verse 21, and the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Woo, look what he said to him. That's what Jesus says to us, what the Father says to us. Verse 22, but the Father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. That's what happened to me at 10. Father met me with compassion. And when I said against heaven and against you, I have sinned, not worthy to be called your son. And I prayed to receive Jesus. And he took off my dead clothes. He took them off, man. He took them off. He did it. All right? He took my clothes off. Was it tough? Not for him, but for me. I took off my dead clothes. And I stepped out of my dead clothes very delicately. <laughs> Did that look difficult? It was. You know why it's difficult? Because the enemy wants to keep you in your sin. He wants to keep you lost. He wants to tell you that's too hard. You can't do that. I know your buddy did it, but you ain't your buddy. You don't know his stuff. He don't know your stuff. I know your sister in Christ did it, but you're different than your sister in Christ. You're worse. The reason it's hard is because he wants to make it hard for you. That's why. But see, he made a way on a cross called Calvary. He took my place. He died in my place because I wasn't worthy for that place. It had to be a spotless lamb. He was a spotless lamb. He was the precious lamb of God. He, he took my sins, put them on a cross, and died for me. Why? So I could have eternal life. So you could have eternal life. I took off my dead clothes, and I put on, woo, I put on a robe of righteousness, amen. I ain't going to put them dead clothes back on. Why? Because it cost Jesus too much and it cost me a lot too. So he put me in new clothes. And you know what he said? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not there. Nope. He's risen. He's risen. Amen. He's risen. That's what he did. That's what he did. So you come out, last week we talked about you come out in a, in a robe of righteousness. He, at salvation, 
put your garment of salvation on you and a robe of righteousness on you. Not because of something you did, no, 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 but because of what he did on the cross called Calvary. We know Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, it is not of yourselves, big boy, but it's a gift from God that no man shall boast. A robe of righteousness is what he clothed me in. Not because of works, not because of church, not because of religion, not because of my parents, not because of how I was born, where I was born, or anything, but because of a choice that I made to take Jesus up on that cross. Jesus died for me to give me eternal life and have a relationship with me, and I said yes to him. And you can say yes today. And you can leave your dead clothes in that dead cave. And you can come out of that dead cave and clothes of righteousness. Why? Because of something you did? No, no, no. Because something Jesus did. Amen. It's what Jesus did.